no bit of news. Uh, so it seems like the pandemic uh, that's been, uh, you know, impacting the whole world, including Australia, hasn't hurt Aussie game developers. So the Interactive Games and Entertainment Association, which is the Australian and New Zealand peak video game developer body uh, in this country in New Zealand, uh, they do annual surveys. So surveying all the big players in the Australian market. And some of the survey results have been quite interesting. So Winnie, did you want to run through some of them and just how the Aussie game devs have been going? Yeah, and before I get to it, I just want to say there's a couple of big considerations I think that people need to keep in mind here. First of all, the sample size is not massive. Um, So they had 52 respondents. But generally speaking, the kind of questions they're asking, they're not going to be sending surveys to like low-level interns or stuff like that. They're asking business questions. So even though it's 52 respondents, I think that they're probably reaching out to more senior people in these companies. And the the Australian games industry is not massive. It's growing and there's lots of small developers. But I think, you know, with any statistics, you know, sample size does matter. And the other consideration is this body, the IGEA, obviously has a very vested interest in the way they communicate these results and stuff. So I think just keeping that in mind is important. But I think there is definitely interesting highlights. So, And and just to add to that, probably the biggest other call out is, the Aussie games industry, like the developers, skew more mobile than anything else, like in, yeah. then in other jurisdictions as well. And you could imagine with COVID, people being locked up and being in front of their phones even more is probably even more beneficial. So, yeah. So basically, the overall overall they found that the industry has remained strong over the last twelve months. Um, and another key thing is that it's kind of given them more enhanced opportunities to find employment outside of what they traditionally would, you know, like local employment and things like that. But there was negative impact definitely felt in certain areas, specifically around contracts um, and the revenue coming in from contracts and projects that have been cancelled because let's say international partners have, you know, maybe felt it a bit more than Australia in that regard. Um, And also this news follows on from the recent new um, announcement from the federal Australian government that, um, of the 30% tax break that we talked about uh, back on, uh, I think, episode 43. But, yeah, some of the quick highlights. So they found that 62% of uh, people reported stable or increased overall revenue. And the important part here is it's compared to 33% last year. So it's actually a lot stronger than last year. Mm. Um, And uh, 54% reported stable increased sales sales revenue compared to 44% last year as well. Um, So the negative impact, so 61% of respondents reported cancellation of contracts and projects. Now, they didn't have a reference point to what that was last year, but the fact that the IGEA called that out means that that's probably where they felt the most negative impact. Uh, In terms of how it's affected the way that they work. So 60% of the people have adopted a hybrid model of work. So mixing both uh, remote work and office work, which makes sense. That's, I would imagine it's probably maybe higher in other industries, but obviously that's, you know, I, that's the way that where I work has adopted and it's probably going to be the way going forward for a while while we're all dealing with this crap. Um, But interestingly, 33% have uh, hired interstate, um, uh, you know, workers and 28% have hired internationally. So it's really interesting that it's kind of with this has been talked about a lot outside of games. It's like the pandemic's almost accelerated trends that were probably going moving forward anyway. Um, but I just I think it happened in different industries though, more so. I've had friends who pre pandemic, uh, one friend traveled the world for nearly three years just contracting. Yeah, but, but, but I they're, mean, they're doing local work, right? No. All online. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. And she lived in a whole bunch of countries. It was really cool. Mm. Yeah. So it's, I think it's just really interesting. If anyone wants to check it out, um, we'll link the IGEA's kind of, you know, write up about it. Mm. There was a quote that I found interesting from uh, Steve Wang, who's the general manager of Wargaming Sydney, and they do like the World of Tanks games and things mm. like that. Um, so he they, he says that now now that we're fully flexible, hiring remotely has proven to be very workable for our studio. We have employed new staff from Queensland and New Zealand with no requirement to be in the office. He also does mention the fact that they're also you know uh, hiring interns uh, that are working remotely, which I think is a really really great um, movement for the industry, knowing that that's always a 
a bit of a barrier if someone wants to get into the Australian gaming industry is that they have to move to one of the big cities in the past. So now there might be more opportunities to, you know, if you, you do live in a state nice. or a city that doesn't have a lot of those development houses doing looking at that kind of stuff. Now, the other related news that um, happened this week is... Um, this is wider than gaming, but it does impact gaming massively, is the Department of Home Affairs uh, has added programmers and multimedia specialists to what they call the Priority priority Migration Skilled Occupation List, which is a bit of a mouthful, or PM Soul. Nice. Um, so I've, PM Soul. Yeah, I've worked in a related industry to skilled migration pathways before, and this is this is great news. And it was really born from uh, from what I've read from the fact that um, you know they during the pandemic that a lot of industries have struggled to get the the skilled people that they need, so they've they've added I think about twenty new occupations to the list, and that's obviously outside of gaming as well. But what it means is that it will make it easier for game developers that are um, you know the skilled game developers that are looking to you know potentially move to Australia to gain permanent residency in Australia. And the positive effect that has is that it will open up a lot more talent for our studios here for people that are skilled and looking to come in to work in Australia. So I think this is great news combined with that 30% 30 tax break. Honestly, this is the most positive that I think the Australian games industry has looked in. I don't know. It's almost ever to me. I think think in terms of uh, settings from the government, it's certainly the best that's ever been. I think in terms of like what the games industry has been producing, it's getting there. I mean, we don't have any AAA studios anymore, so that's a bit of a shame. But, yeah, it's interesting. I, I think well, this programming thing is more about like big companies in Australia who need more programmers because so many things are moving digital. But it's going to have the knock-on effect of making, as you said, a lot easier to get game devs to move to the country if, if they do want international talent. If we do have Activision's Melbourne studio that they're really that they're really yeah. increasing now, so but if you're talking about fully owned uh, Australian AAA st- studios, and look, I don't know when the last when that was the last the case anyway. So, um, but yeah, yeah, I think it was around the LA Noir time, and um, yeah, yeah, also Borderlands the prequel. Yeah, so yeah, I think this is great. Um, just any time that some Aussie. You know, games industry news comes up. Um, we're the ones that are going to look at it. So. Yeah, sweet. All right, 